In the late Permian, other changes were underway as Oklahoma's older rocks began interacting with subsurface fluids. Hot fluids flowing through limestones in far northeastern Oklahoma formed valuable mineral deposits in an area known as the Tri-State Mining District. It's a fact of everyday life. You can't drive down a road and not see some relic of, of our mining history. The Ozark Plateau in Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri is well known because it forms caves. Caves are a type of karst topography, and that is the result of water percolating through the rocks that's slightly acidic, dissolving their limestone. Those dissolved regions are perfect places for hot fluids to come up from deep below, bringing in minerals like lead and zinc for us to come in later and mine. For another geology in the kitchen moment, we'll look at how karsts are formed. Now karsts are formed when acidic rainwater flows down through cracks in limestone. And that acidic rainwater actually dissolves a part of the carbonate that is in the limestone. And over time, these things hollow out in places where we have fractures that cross. More hollowing out goes on until we have caves and sinkholes. This is how karst landscapes form. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of vinegar and a little bit of baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate. So the carbonate in here will react with the vinegar, which is an acid, and will produce a similar reaction, except instead of over millions or thousands of years, this will occur over a matter of a few seconds. So how do caves and sinkholes really form? What we've got here is a little sodium bicarbonate and we fractured it up in two directions so now we have a fracture that runs across here and a fracture that runs across here and in the middle when fluid is flowing through this rock the places where these things join are going to be places where there's a little more room for fluid to move through now if that fluid is a little acidic like this vinegar I have here when it flows through this carbonate unit it's going to dissolve a little bit of calcium carbonate at a time so if I start to inject very slowly, a little bit of vinegar into this spot, and inject a little more. What happens is the fluid remains confined to the fractures and starts to eat its way out of the fractures into the rock beside the joint set. And as we continue to do this over millions of years, in this case we're speeding the process up greatly by using a very reactive substance and a very reactive household acid. What we start to do is create a karst. And in this case, the karst is a little sinkhole. So now what we want to do is color in our caves a little bit so they're a little easier seen. So we've put a little bit of red wine vinegar in with our vinegar. We're going to go ahead and put it back in and this should stain some of the cave pathways red. You don't want to do this too much or you'll stain it all red. We just want a little for contrast. Okay, sort of see the holes, the little caverns and pathways where the fluid is branched away from the fractures as it's dissolved preferentially into the bicarbonate. This is uh, something that happens in nature over a very, very long period of time. Not in a few minutes like we've done it, but in a few thousand to hundreds of thousands of years. In the early 20th century, the Tri-State was one of North America's richest mining areas. A worthwhile trip over state lines to Joplin, Missouri, and the Tri-State Mining Museum tells more about the history of these deposits. The main minerals that are being mined here are zinc and lead, sphalerite and galena. Um, they're both industrial metals, uh, they're used mainly in the making of batteries, even to this very day, lead acid batteries in your car. Through the first part of the 20th century, mines in this region made up over 50% of the total zinc production of the United States. About the 19 teens with the, with the outbreak of World War I, they became metals of national importance because of course lead is used to make ammunition. Uh, once again, it goes into making batteries. Uh, zinc is used to galvanize steel and make it rust proof so your, your lovely tanks and jeeps don't just disintegrate out in the field. One of the final products from the mines here are lead bars like this called pigs. And they're really, really heavy. Uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna leave that for someone else today. <laughs> Most of the ore deposits here are from a much older time. And what you have is a occurring here is called a karst landscape. And it is just limestone caverns, uh, naturally occurring caves and tunnels, and voids all underground. This mineral from below becomes superheated and uh, condenses into a steam. And as it comes up and hits these em empty pockets, it cools and then slowly coats these. And it's almost like making rock candy or dipping chocolate where you're dipping something in and adding a layer at a time, only in reverse. You have an opening and we've got a film that we put around it and then another film grows around it and then another film until some of these would grow solid. Some of them would still stay, stay very cave-like in there. In addition to valuable minerals such as lead and zinc, other more common minerals such as calcite and dolomite are found throughout the region. Mm -hmm.